Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and I'm bringing you today a video about photography, and specifically I have some ideas for pinhole cameras that I think I'm going to share with you and let you guys own the ideas. So as you might remember or might know from perhaps reading my blog and looking at past episodes of these videos, you know that I've been involved in pinhole photography and other forms of camera making and DIY type photography activities for many years. I've built a whole number of pinhole cameras, uh, for everything from sub-miniature sized all the way up to ultra-large format. And uh, currently I've been working with these little uh, film canister pinhole cameras that make a uh, little inch and three quarters square prints onto Harman direct positive paper. But I continue to have other ideas about photography. And I had two more ideas this weekend, but I decided that instead of me building or working on these projects and showing you, what I would do is I'm going to give these ideas away to you guys for free. These are freebies. These are ideas that are camera making ideas that you guys should go. I would encourage you to go and work on yourself. See if you can do it and then comment back in the comments below here with your results, including any links to any blogs, photos, websites, videos, or whatever. So without any further ado, let me introduce to you the two ideas I have. Okay, so I've documented some of these ideas in my little field notes notebook, and let me uh, just describe for you one at a time what they are. Well, the first idea is I've been using these steel metal 35 millimeter development tanks for developing my little Harman direct positive prints in. I tape them to the inside wall of the tank and then use it as a makeshift rotary drum with a little bit of chemistry like 100 milliliters. The, the tank is on its side and I rotate it on a, on a base. And You've probably seen videos that I've done in the past with about this. Well, I have this idea for combining a pinhole camera with a developing tank. And the idea is you're going to drill a hole in the side of the uh, developing tank, like a quarter inch hole, and you're going to tape a brass pinhole to the outside of the tank of the hole. And the trick is sealing it up so it's liquid resistant, liquid proof. Then you'll have a simple shutter on the pinhole like a piece of black tape. And the idea is you're going to load a sheet of Harman direct positive paper into the tank opposite the pinhole and then you're going to go out and expose the picture in the in the camera and then you can just go to somewhere mobile like a coffee shop, cafe, deli, bar, restaurant with a little backpack and your camera and a little box full of little chemical tank chemical containers and you can develop the uh the print right inside the developing tank as you're having lunch, for instance. So that's the first idea. The second idea is, I've had this idea for a while, which is when you're taking pinhole cameras out that have paper negatives or direct positive paper and they're box cameras and you want to have uh, more than one shot available and you don't want to use sheet film holders, well, there's ways of making these box cameras with storage compartments inside of them where you can store extra sheets of paper. And I've shown you these v cameras in previous videos. Well, you have to generally use a changing bag every time you want to change out the, the pictures. Uh, the, the paper. So you have to take the camera off the tripod, uh, put it in the changing bag, zip up the changing bag, find a place to sit down so you can put it on your lap or a table-like surface, and then you have to stick your arms in there and then change out the paper, and then unzip it, do the whole reverse procedure every time you want to take a shot. Well, my idea is to build a pinhole camera into a changing bag, but to do it in such a way that you don't destroy the bag. So those are the two ideas I have for today. So let's look at them in a little bit more close detail so I can give you some more ideas on how to do it. Well, let's start with the uh, developing tank pinhole camera idea. So this is one of my stainless developing tanks. I think I have three of them right now. Now they have a little cap in the top. There's a light proof liquid trap, actually a light trap that enables you to put liquid in there. 
and then the lid pulls off like that. And for using it as a pinhole camera, you're not going to need the steel reels unless you want them in the picture, right? <laughs> so um, you're going to take the, the steel drum or the steel tank and you're going to want to drill a hole somewhere about halfway up the tank. And this is stainless steel and it's a wall thickness of, well, I don't know, but it's fairly thick, right? So if you're going to do a hand drill or a little tabletop drill press for drilling a hole in here, so I would say something like a quarter inch hole approximately, maybe an eighth of an inch hole. I would, I would mo more likely go for a quarter inch hole. You're going to want to drill a uh, pilot hole with like a little sixteenth inch drill bit and then followed up with a bigger bit. I would definitely be using machine oil, cutting oil on your drill bit when you're, when you're drilling into this uh, tank, right? So you'll have a quarter inch hole, hopefully a nice even one. The next question is, where are you going to mount the pinhole? So the pinhole, you're going to make it out of a little piece of brass. Um, traditionally, I would put the pinholes on the inside of the camera, but consider the idea that maybe you might want to, over time, you might want to replace the piece of brass if it starts to get corroded with the chemistry. Now, I don't think developer is going to hurt it much. Stop bath is a mild acid, so that could start hurting the brass over time. And then the fixer, if you're using used fixer, you might start plating a little silver oxide onto it, which actually is not a bad thing. So anyways, you might want to replace the pinhole over time. And, if, and because of that, it's probably a better idea to mount the pinhole on the outside. And you're going to want to center the hole, the pinhole itself, on your quarter inch hole that you drilled. Then the next question is how are you going to make it so the liquid doesn't leak out of this thing? Well the pinhole itself is so small that I don't think much liquid is going to come out of it. But sealing up the brass around the edge on the, of the metal, the walls of the metal container could be a problem. So one of the things you might want to try doing is maybe a hot glue gun. Maybe you can put a uh, line the periphery of the piece of brass with hot glue without getting any on the pinhole and then stick it to your hole. Uh, the other idea is maybe you might want to use a two-part glue like epoxy. Um, if you do that, keep in mind that it's most likely going to be more like permanent, right? So maybe you don't want to make use epoxy, but I would say maybe hot glue might be a good idea. So then you have your, let's assume you have your pinhole then attached to the outside of the camera and it's going to be fairly tight. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. One other idea is I have this um, miracle tape and it is a double-sided tape and it's not the thick foamy white double-sided tape. It's a tape. It's a real thin double-sided tape and maybe you could use that kind of stuff as a light proof gasket. You put double-sided tape around the hole and then you stick the brass to it. And then maybe you can follow it up with a piece, a larger piece of black gaffer's tape with a hole in the middle around the whole piece of brass to hold the brass in place. So for instance, let me just stick it on here. You'll have your piece of brass and you'll have a, bi a bigger piece of tape around it to, to make sure the whole thing sticks to the outside of the tank. So that's one idea that you could use. Then for actually using, making the shutter, uh, the outside shutter for the, for the camera, I would recommend using probably black electrical tape. Um, if you use another piece of black gaffer's tape, it might peel off the pinhole when you try opening and closing it, but use a piece of black electrical tape for your shutter. So, that makes a camera. Now, for processing, right? So you've loaded your piece of paper. Oh, by the way, these are about three inches tall, so you want a piece of paper, a photo paper, or Harman direct positive paper about three inches tall and about maybe five, six inches wide, uh, uh, long, to wrap around the inside. Use a, use a loop of drafting tape on the back side of the paper to stick it in there, opposite your pinhole. You'll cover this up, put the lid on, so you'll, you'll do your exposure like you would a normal pinhole camera. And then when you're out and about and you're going to your cafe, restaurant, bar, grill, coffee shop thingy, you can have your little containers, little Tupperware containers of developer stop bath fixer. And then you just do a rotary processing. You can either do it right on the table, 
or you can bring your little homemade rotary processing uh, roller base like this. So that's the idea for the developing tank pinhole camera. And let's see what you guys can do with it. Well, the next freebie idea that I'm going to share with you guys is this idea of a changing bag uh, pinhole camera. Well, this is a changing bag. It's sort of too big to show you on camera, but it's a rectangle uh, with two short arm sleeves that have elastic cuffs. On the opposite side from the cuffs are the zippered opening of the bag, and it's actually two bags in one, so that enables it to be light tight. Um, so I've made a whole bunch of pinhole cameras over the years, homemade boxes, and, or in this case, taking a, a decorator box from, I believe it was Hobby Lobby. And this is like a cinema themed decorator box. And what I did is I, um, I made this little foam core insert where you load four inch square paper prints. And then there is a storage slot system in the side in the side of it for storing you exposed and unexposed sheets of paper. So it just slips in there and the back goes on and then I use rubber bands to hold it. So um, it has an angle of view like something like that, right? This is just an example of one type of camera but there's a lot of different ways to make these. But the idea was I had was um, so instead of having to take the camera in and out of the changing bag, let's see if we can build the changing bag around the camera or the, and without destroying the changing bag. So what I noticed on these changing bags is, of course, you have an arm sleeve here and an arm sleeve there. And I noticed the arm sleeve is fairly short. And I also noticed that if you take one of these sauce cans, that it fits nice and very snugly. It's approximately the size of a person's wrist but it fits very snugly on this cuff and you could paint, uh, spray paint or cover with black gaffers tape the outside of this can. Um, you could cut a hole in the end of it, have your pinhole mounted and shutter mounted to the end of it, but I would say you don't need this long of a can. You need something shorter because the cuff itself is only about this long and the idea is that on the section of the bag between the cuffs is where your camera would be located. So my idea for this camera is the section of the bag that's between the two cuffs will be the bottom of the bag, if you will, and you're going to have the camera of some kind in the bag and um, the pinhole is going to be pointing out the cuff with a short, you'll have a short can like this, maybe only a third of the height or half the height, sticking out the front of the camera, and the camera goes in the bag, and then the cuff goes around that can, that cylinder, and that makes a light, tight seal. And then the back of the camera, your other, your other hand goes in through the other sleeve, and you'll be able to open the, the camera, the back of the camera open, and uh, swip, swap out your, your paper. The idea is you want to be able to do it, you want to build it in such a way that you can swap out the paper with one hand. Keeping in mind your other hand is going to be outside the bag, but you can still hold and manipulate the, the box through the bag from the outside. You can hold it and you'll still be able to help with your other hand. Now the other thing you might want to consider doing is making it more like a changing tent. And what I mean is you have this fabric of the bag and it's going to be flowing down like this and it's going to kind of be interfering with your paper. So you might want to make an extension of your box camera that goes behind it enough to fit in between the two arm sleeves so that you have kind of a square tube to stick your hand in that you can manipulate the paper without the folds of fabric getting in the way of your camera. Um, so the other question you might have is, well, how am I going to attach this camera to a tripod if the bag is all there sealed up? 
Well, one of the things I've done over the years is I've made these little makeshift platforms for pinhole cameras. And this is, I have a couple here to show you. It's just a scrap of, this is like countertop material, or you can use scraps of old plywood. But the idea is you put some kind of a quarter 20 tripod bushing in the center of it. And then you can set the whole box camera and inside the changing bag, you know, just draped over the platform, if you will. Let me get the bigger one here. <clears throat> You'll have the box in the bag, of course, but the whole thing will be sitting on a platform like this and it'll be on a tripod. And so then you'll have the one sleeve of the bag will be your uh, where the pinhole is, right? And the other sleeve will be on the back of the platform and that's where you can stick your arm in. And you'll carry this thing around in your tripod and um, and you bungee cord the the whole thing to the uh, to the platform. So that's the second idea, a changing bag pinhole camera where you can swap out multiple sheets of paper conveniently just by sticking your arm in the back of the bag and manipulate it and it should be a lot quicker to operate than having to continuously unzip the bag, pull it off the tripod, etc, cetera, etc cetera, as I described before. Well, I hope that these several ideas have served as inspiration to you to go out and try making your own pinhole camera devices and doing so as these two projects illustrate with some kind of unique idea that's different from just the usual box with a hole in it. You know, camera making is a very rewarding part of the photography experience, when you, especially if you can design and build your own devices with some unique twist or flair to it. And I've found there a lot of reward over the years in doing so. So I hope you guys uh, take some of these ideas and build them and uh, let me know in your comments below. Give me links to any blog articles, pictures, whatever you might have, videos. And until next time, you have yourself a great day.